introduce this question raised by Daniel by a very touching story which is reported concerning Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, um, who later became the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the father-in-law of the Lubavitcher Rebbe who everybody knows about, Nachum Mendel, was the son-in-law of Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, who was uh, who escaped from Russia to come to America. And he really founded the American place for Lubavitch. And when he died, his son-in-law, he asked his son-in-law to take over the leadership. The father of Rabbi Yosef Yitzchok was uh, Sholem Baer, the previous Ashaf, the previous Lubavitch a hundred years ago. So when this Rabbi Yosef Yitzchok was age four, uh, so he was uh, showing his father how he knows the Aleph Beit. He just learned the Aleph Beit. The Aleph Beit came on. He read all the letters. When he came to the Sheen, he just said the Sheen. So he said, but you know, there's another way. You can read the letter Sheen as Sheen and also as Sheen. When, what, what, when is it Sheen and when is it Sheen? You tell me. When is it Sheen? So when the, right. the dot is on the right prong. And when is it seen? On the left prong. So he told him, you should know there's a deep lesson here. The lesson is that <coughs> you should, you, you begin, why the two dots? The two dots represent the two eyes. He said this to this boy before, you've got two eyes. You've got the right eye and you've got the left eye. So, uh, you should, the right eye is there to always only see good things. The left eye is there to see also bad things. Sometimes you've got, to, you've got to face bad things as well in life, and you've got now to deal with them. The, and the, and the, the truth, the right side represents, the right eye, that you should use only to see good in other people, and the left eye you can use to go and see faults in yourself. Yeah? Because the le with the left eye you see faults. So see faults in your own self. But for other people, always always see good things for other people. That's what we talked about. The beautiful, beautiful episode. Really, that's how, it, that's how the Rebbe grew up. They tried to see good in every Jew. And uh, <laughs> anyone who knows the the Babich Rebbe, that some have the privilege to know, so he certainly saw good in every single Jew. And it's, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's marvelous how this aspect of Lubavitch is continuing to grow year after year, even though it's no longer, no longer with us. They try and see good in every Jew, and that's why they're able to change so many Jews to become Bali Shuba, more than any other group in the world, whatever all the other, those who claim they're doing things, but they're the greatest. So this is this is a lesson. Now, um, so I said in a, a, I quoted the Midrash as follows. We're now in a situation of the <coughs> prediction put into the mouth of Bilam that Ba'achret Ha'imim, the end of days, that means the time we're in now, Mi Yechye Mi Su Mo'el. Who is going to live when Ishmael rules the world? And that's a big question which faces us today. Because I think today they signed the agreement. Yeah? Ishmael or includes also the Iranians and Daesh and all these. So the question is who, can, who and how is mankind going to survive these wicked people, these maniacs, if we knew call them, who, who do so much evil. Mi yichye. Oi, he says, oi. Oi is always the expression, oi vavoi, oyev. Biggest oyev is when Yishmael and the, and the daughter of Yishmael became the wife of Esau. When that happens, that they absorb all the cruelties of Esau 
And then they develop them as a universal relig religion in the name of death and destruction. That's it. So this is a great uh, threat against all mankind. Oi, mi yichir. So it's a bit of mi yichir who's going to live when this happens. And he said, mi su moi eil. So on this, there, there are two aspects that identify it with Yishmael. One is mi su moi eil. One explanation in the middle is from the other nation that was given the name Aleph Lamed. Because in the Tanakh, there are only really two nations that have as the name of their nation, Aleph Lamed. And what's Aleph Lamed represent? Yeah. Chesed, loving kindness. Yeah, the God of loving kindness. But when that name was given to Yishmael, so, unfortunately, as it says, or in Embereshet, Yadoba Kol Vyad Kol Bo, his hand wants to control the whole world. And unfortunately, to remove all those who don't believe in his interpretation of what God wants. And therefore, in the name of Allah, they go out to destroy all the non-believers according to the various interpretations of different groups amongst Islam. And they, the rest of them have to be killed and destroyed. And especially the people of Israel are targeted. So who's going to live? Who's going to survive? Nevertheless, Bilom says, in the end, they will all survive. Mankind will survive. Those that uh, amongst Ishmael who will do teshuva will also survive. Many of them will do teshuva. But still, it's an enormous threat. We're going through it. And there's another explanation. We assume it is some is Samol. Samol is the left. So that's when. So mole is when we have the left, the left dot, as it were. And Sama El means the poison of God. God created poisons. Why did God create poisons? To heal people who are sick. Sick people need poison to heal them. And people who are morally sick, sometimes need the poison of destruction. You've got to destroy them. And that's what we see today. People are out to murder and murder and commit suicide and meanwhile kill innocent people. They are a threat to mankind, and sometimes you've got to kill them. There's no other way. You know. So it doesn't mean that um, that that uh, this is an education. That there's a debate now coming up in Parliament, which uh, the Prime Minister has postponed. I think he's right too. There's some who say we've got to introduce capital punishment for the for these extreme suicide bombers and murderers killing innocent people. But, you know, we have a rule that um, in, in clear self-defense, when you've got no other choice, the, the, the approach of the Torah is at all times, he who comes to kill you, then if you can wound him or disarm him, fine. If you can't, you kill him first, because Hashem doesn't want these killers to go on killing. And if, if it's clear, he's already got the knife at your neck, or the or the or the, or the, or the gun, right on your heart, you know. Then you've got no choice. If you can kill him, he's strong enough. Kill him first. Therefore, in self-defense, tzahal is a tzava haganali, so to protect us. But to give capital punishment such is uh, is going to be it's very difficult without without a sanhedrin, and we don't have a seventh day. This idea of a chiddush sanhedrin. Is, uh, is, is not valid according to any clear authorities, whatever some people want to say. There's no such thing that's renewed the Sanhedrin today. The Sanhedrin today, in fact, the place of the Sanhedrin taken by the Gudulay Torah. That's an important principle to know. So, I, to, one has to consult the Gudulay Torah before they start in, introducing capital punishment. Especially as, as with regard to the, 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 the Islam approach, they don't care. The capital punishment for them is really an entry into the Quranic paradise. So it's not going to act as a big deterrent. Because in any case, they kill themselves to kill others. So what does capital punishment mean? So therefore, I'm very pleased that this hasn't come up. I think uh, uh, the Prime Minister, I hope he'll keep postponing the debate. Because people say, well, maybe that will help. Anyway, to carry on, what, what Daniel raised here is like this, that Yisrael, also the dot is on the left side. And what's Yisrael? Yisrael means that God rules the world. 
But Yisrael also means it's a struggle to bring God as the rule of the world. And that is the explanation given the Chumash. Yisrael means because you have struggled with divine powers and the human powers, as even something simplex make imelokim, that means it's a moral struggle for the people of Israel as well. Otherwise, the people of Israel, some of them, they also rebel against Hashem. And they rebel against morality. So we have to remove it with the Midas Hadin. You know, but there's no, no point um, chesed without limit. It will also mean that you'll go and you know, you'll be tolerant for those who are cruel. In fact, we know Amalek is not destroyed. So the saying of the sages is he who has compassion for cruel people will ultimately be cruel to those who are compassionate. And the example is given from Shaul HaMelech. He was the king, he had to lead the people of Israel the right path. And he had compassion on Amalek. And therefore, it allowed them to survive. And what happened to him? So he became very cruel to the compassionate because the priests in the place of the Mishkon in Nov, who gave some food to the starving group of David Amelach, he had them all killed. And, the, and, and all that the priests wanted to do was to save this group from starvation. In fact, the group was, was led by his son-in-law, David Amelach. But he became so blind to, to his own characteristic, which was to be tolerant, when it came to his jealousy of David Amel, what he was doing, he went, he went and killed the priests. The priests themselves, they, they didn't side with anyone. They just, their way was, at all times, to help people who were starving. So, this, this, so that's, what, that's the example that's given. So it's a struggle. And today it's also a struggle for the Jewish people to survive. Some people also say this, many of the ultra-ultra-liberals amongst uh, the nations of the world, which have also affected a great part of Jewish leadership, who belong to BDS, and they also believe that, that, that Israel is guilty of all different crimes, and therefore they want to boycott Israel, and they speak in, on behalf of the poor Palestinians, who spread lies all over the world. So we have to still recognize that the Jews also have gone, may have gone from the wrong direction. And we've got to try and bring the right direction. Sometimes we've got to oppose their point of view and not be too, we're too tolerant with all the uh, would-be suicide bombers and murderers, which was what they want, give in to them, give in to Hamas in the, all their threats and all their preparations for killing more Jews. By, by protecting their, their, those who, who target us and who throw bombs at us, protecting them with women and children, they own ambulances on hospitals. So, you know, we have a difficult situation to protect ourselves and we've got to recognize that we've got to be strict. The same applies to Iran. If we're going to give in to all the, uh, all the apparent uh, uh, political deals uh, which Iran is entering into, obviously, to be able to continue preparing their non-conventional weapons to be able to destroy Israel, they say it all the time. They even say America is a Satan. And at the same time, these negotiations are going on. So we have to do everything possible to protect ourselves, which needs the struggle, which also needs looking. Don't, don't go and go around with rosy spectacles that you only see good in every enemy. That's not the way of the Jewish people. We don't believe in turning the other cheek. We do believe in never being violent when it's not necessary. But, uh, but in order to remove evil, sometimes it has to be done. Even Avraham Avinu agreed that Sodom and Amora were such an anti chesed society and destroyed, was capable of destroying all the work he was trying to do to spread chesed, but it isn't a, a minion of innocent people then he said, well, there's no other choice. They have to destroy them. Otherwise, the power of Hashem, of loving kindness, will disappear from the world. So therefore, Israel is also 
to make Hashem the ruler, which means the rulership means loving kindness, which Aleph Lamed represents, but the seed is necessary to produce the true significance of Aleph Lamed. And we hope that, as we're told, in Ishmael, in the end, in Bereshit, he did Teshuvah. Now, now, what I would like to do now is to continue from yesterday where we, where we saw that the 15 curses which Ishmael will bring upon the Jewish people which, we, which are unfolding in front of our eyes were already, pre <coughs> were already prophesied 100 years before Islam started by the Bishmoel. And maybe Ishmael became a Jewish name. You can ask, Esau isn't a Jewish name, but Ishmael is. Maybe to indicate that there is one aspect in which Ishmael is closer than Esau. What is that? Companion of us. Brit Mila. Companion of us. Two things, you're right. Brit Mila, and also they believe in the spiritual God. They won't allow any form of image for the d divine. And therefore, they've got the ability to come and fulfill the Noahide code completely, and many of them do. And those who do fulfill the Noahide code, so then we can pray, we certainly pray in, pray in their mosque and pray together with them and make good bond with them, as has frequently happened in Jewish history. There were periods when the least, certainly amongst the more moral and intellectual level of the Muslim world, there was great cooperation between them and the, the, also the scholars of the Jewish people who worked together to develop also a deep understanding of the existence of God and also bringing proofs for his existence together. This is well known and they had a great influence in the Middle Ages and as a result also, the truth is, since the Jews were very good at translations, and at the same time many of the Jews had good minds, not only like today, we know that uh, the, the, the Jewish mind has brought about, uh, the, I think, almost 25% of Nobel Prizes in different areas of scientific investigation that were acquired by Jews. So people know the Jewish mind that is, is very much developed and uh, in the Middle Ages this was a cooperation which brought about a flourishing of all the scientific investigation as well as religious thought and also development of morality. So it's, there are elements in Islam where there's great could be great cooperation. So we saw the 15 evil elements are mentioned that correspond, we saw in yesterday's year, to the 15 elements of negative qualities before the Mashiach comes amongst the people of Israel. That means the birth pangs of the Mashiach will be strongest when our inner weaknesses don't give us the full protection of Hashem. And therefore, an opportunity is given to Ishmael to have rights upon this land. Because uh, we find already in Bereshit that Avram Avinu prayed that Ishmael should ultimately live in front of Hashem. And he's got Bitmila and he believes in Hashem. And that's the Zuhut that they have. When they have the Zuhut, if the land of Israel is empty, from Jews observing our mission to become the true progenitors of Avraham Avinu's covenant with Hashem. And uh, so it's really a, a lesson to us all the time, change. Now the question is, why, what's this, what's this business of 15? Can any of you tell me any area of Jewish life where 15 has significance. We know that the whole of the Torah is based upon a double language. 
Language for us are words. Words are formed by letters. So therefore, letters make up words. This is already the earliest work on the Jewish language, on the, on the Hebrew language, the Sefi Yitzira, which is uh, it's got the Kabbalistic ideas in it, but the truth is it's got deep grammatical ideas connected closely with the Hebrew language. And the essence of the Hebrew language is that it's not just a language of letters which make up words. What else is it? Not gematria numbers. It's also numbers. And the number that we see all the way through, right from the first chapter of the Chumash, numbers play a great part. And what's the basic number we see from the first part of the Chumash? Seven. Huh? Seven. Six and seven. So six and seven, six days and seventh Shabbat, it introduces us to the number system of the Tanakh. And all the way through Jewish life, through Torah life, we see there are numbers, numbers of significance. The eighth is the Brit Mila. If you go into it more deeply, it goes all the way through the Tanakh. And the Aleph Beit has significance. You see it even in, in the structure of many sections of the Chumash and all over the Tanakh. Number of key words and so on. So we see numbers are significant. So why is it, what's the significance of 15? Yeah. Where else do you find it? Yudke. 15 steps in the Haggadah. 15 steps. Which ones? In the Haggadah. Yeah. The 15 separate steps. In the Haggadah we say, Dai, Dai, Yenu, Dai, Dai, Yenu, Dai, Dai, Yenu, Dai, So we say these are, we say these are the Ma'alot through which Hashem brought us from creation to build the Beit HaMikdash. So we see in the Gadda of Pesach, there are also 15 steps. Where else do you find 15 steps? It's for Ma'alot, Ma'alot of steps, 15 steps. Where else? Where else? Beit HaMikdash. In the Beit HaMikdash, where were there 15 steps? From the temple itself, into the temple. Go between what? For the Levites. Yes, but which courtyard? We went, there was Ezra Nashim, a courtyard for the women, and a courtyard for the men in the temple. So there were 15 steps going between the courtyard of the women and the courtyard of the men in the Beit Hamikdash. And many say that's why we have Shia Hamal, which was all those songs were sung by the Leviim on those 15 steps. And where else do you know what's significant about 15? 15 is Yud K. Yud K. Yud K is one of the shortest names of God. And Yud and the K have a deeper significance. Now, in order to understand this, so I'll give you here the one who was who was who, who translated the numerical concept into a philosophical concept for us to understand was the Maral of Prague. Maral was a very deep thinker, a very big town of Acham. And, uh, you know, many miracles attribute to him. Even <coughs> they say that the, there's a synagogue in Prague. Do you know what it's called in Prague, the synagogue? Yes. One? The Altnai Synagogue. So some say Altnai means old and new synagogue. Yep. Have you ever been there? People from Europe haven't visited Prague? Anyway, it was a famous synagogue. And uh, they say that the golem of the Maral is buried in the attic of that synagogue. And the stories that uh, even when the Nazis went up, to investigate, they were killed. They died. Anyway, these are legends, but I mean, there's, it's 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 still a bit of a riddle. What exactly was the golem? But I suppose all of you have read the legend of the golem of Prague. Can can. Yeah. <laughs> the but the truth is that the Maral of Prague, he 
went very deep in the understanding of the Torah and his works do not mention, generally speaking, not the Arizal, who was a great Kabbalist before him, nor the Zohar, but he does mention many sections of the Gomorrah and the Midrashim and explains them on a deep level, which is, as it were, translating many concepts which are more clearly enunciated in the Kabbalah, but using philosophy, philosophical expressions to explain it. So that's why I've given you here, those who want to follow inside, and uh, in, in more, let's just say, the Maral had an enormous influence on Hasidus. Most of Hasidic thought, whether it's uh, Fas Emes, or whether it's uh, Chabad, or whether it's uh, Tzaduk HaKohen, they, they <coughs> gained a great deal of inspiration from the words of Maral. And here this is explanation of the Zezlikens of 15. So I'm going to paraphrase it, but those who want to follow the Hebrew, it's worthwhile for you to, to see the words in the original. His words have become very popular in, today when people like to understand what is the inner significance of Torah and Mitzvot. And it's a very good introduction. It's better than those who actually use Kabbalistic expressions which are, generally speaking, liable to be misinterpreted. So he said like this. He starts with the explanation from the Gadah of Pesach, which said, Kama ma'alot tovot. It said, how many great steps did Hashem give to us? That's what we recite, say the night. So in the, in the Haggadah of Pesach, after I'm paraphrasing inside, anybody wants to, anyone wants to know, copy please. I'm going to say it straight in English, but I'm just paraphrasing the words. So in Akada, after we have counted up the ten plagues, then we see that all the kindnesses which the Holy and Blessed Be He did with the people of Israel, they are called Ma'alot Tovot. They are great steps going upwards. Each one of them is an additional step. It's like when a person has to go to a higher place, so he can only get there by going step after step. One is greater than the other. This also applies to these 15 steps. Each one is a madrega, which means a step to another one, until you reach the madrega achrona, the tachlet. The purpose is the final step. So, which is what? The final one is, he built us the chosen house, which is the temple, to bring atonement to all our sins. And these are 15 steps. And don't think that this aspect of 15 is chance. So, first of all, you tell me, where do we find 15 in the world around us? Where do we find it? that you didn't mention yet. Where do we find it? But generally speaking, numbers, numbers are also the method whereby we understand nature. Mathematics, for example, deeper mathematics, high mathematics, has been the biggest instrument in the discovery of science. It's called pure science, which gives the ability of applied science. Pure science is mathematical. Because the more that a person uses his mathematical skills, the more is he able to see that creation is also built on numbers, connected with numbers. So where do we find 15 in the world around us? Oh, the 15 republics of the Soviet Union before... Climate. I'm asking in creation, not in history. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Tibet in, Cre North we have huh? in Tibet North we have 15 also, I think. Yes, but no, but where do we have it in, in, the, in the physical world around us? Where's the 15? 
You don't know whether it's 50. Water or some huh? elements? No. 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 Where do we find a cycle of 15? Going up and then going down. The weather? No. Where? Going up and then going down. Oh, 15. the cycle of the moon. The moon. The cycle of the moon. The light of the moon, which reflects the light of the sun, it goes day after day from darkness to the full moon. It's 15. And then from the, that's the waxing of the moon, and then comes the waning of the moon. It goes down, which also influences the tides, as we know. The tide, tide and time wait for no man. The, the tides are influenced by the moon movements going upwards and then going down. Obviously it's interrelated. So we see it lies in nature. The same applies to seven. We won't go into that now. But the harmony of the world around us is also built upon a cycle of seven. It's a deep principle. Anyway, here the, here the morale says, where else do we find the, the 15? Because what's the, what is the final final step of the Dayenu, what is it? Dayenu. The final step of Dayenu, what is it? Hashem killed the angel of death. That what? Hashem killed the angel of death. No, that's, 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 the fifteenth step is he built us the Beit Hamikdash to bring atonement for all our sins. That's the height of achievement of the people of Israel that we've got a Beit Hamikdash. What we're mourning for its lack today, we don't have it. That final step, but Hashem gave it to us a few times. So he says, "Kacheshbon or Mitzvah Zeh Nimza." This is the number that existed from the Ezra Nashim to Ezra Israel. There were 15 ma'alot steps, and they correspond to what? To the 15 shiramal and sefer tehillim. And the moon, which finds its complete f f fullness on the 15th day, is also the same. This is all a proof that there is a deep concept of rising to the top step, which is 15. It's also referred to indirectly in the pair from Tehillim which we said today. What did we say today? Mia, we said the pair we said today. Mia le bar Hashem, umia kum bim kom kotcho. Who can rise on the mountain of Hashem? So there it only mentions four qualities, four qualities. But there's another chapter of Tehillim which also speaks going up to the mountain of Hashem another ship, where it's, where it's mentioned, Miyale, and it mentions 15 qualities, 15 qualities that a person should follow in life, which corresponds all to the 15 steps, to reach the full, full moon, reflecting the light of Hashem to the world in a complete <coughs> manner. And this concept of the relationship, what we have to do to go up the steps, and what the moon does, where else do we find that? Where do you find this parallel between the waxing and waning of the moon and also the rising of the people of Israel to the highest blessing? Where else do you find it? Rising and setting sun? No, where do we find this parallel in Jewish life? Monsieur Kapayim? No, not directly. But, in God. but you do. Where do we follow it? Blessing of the moon. Blessing of the moon. When did we do that? Kiddush Lavana. When we, what, Kiddush Lavana you can only do from which time till which time? First part. No, but the, uh, after Rosh Chodesh. It's got to be when the when you when when you can see the first uh, banana of the moon. Yeah, <laughs> you see it coming, and you've got to you can only say say it just before the fullness of the moon. In other words, we, and what does the Prophet say? The Prophet says, what does it say? It says, just like the moon goes from darkness, that's the, that's the conjunction of the moon, when 
it's, this doesn't reflect any light until it reaches fullness. So we say Hashem will also renew the glory of the people of Israel from the time when we're pretty low with a little bit of light, but He'll help us it should grow. And so we have, we have to grow like the moon grows. Yeah? In fact, that's part of the concept we say, you know, when we jump up to the moon and try to reach the moon. And these people always say, try to reach the moon. And we can't get there. So we jump towards it. Ani roked kenektecha. You know what they said? Ani roked. To jump, to dance means roked. Yeah? So when the, the, the words in Kiddush Levana is we jump up towards the moon, we can't reach you. That means we can't actually reach you, but we want to take a lesson from you. Because the, the lesson of the Jewish calendar is we've got to renew ourselves, just like the moon renews itself. That's, that's, that's given in the first Pasha, which is given to the community of Israel in Egypt. They were told, you're in the darkness of Egypt, you've got to renew yourselves, and Hashem will help you. Uh, but they say today, can you rocket connect there? You know, we jump up like that with the feet. So today we say, what do you mean? Today, with my own feet, I can't do. I have a new rocket connect there. With a rocket, you can get there. And with a rocket, man has stepped on the moon. Yeah? And uh, in fact, you know, this was, this was the regular joke. When, when, when uh, uh, the first man stepped on the moon, it was a great event. And then everybody said, well, it's written in Kiddush Levana. It says, there was a time we couldn't reach, now we can reach. And it's not surprising that many Jews have already bought, or someone is selling real estate on the moon. So there's a whole company for that. And Jews are looking forward. When the time comes, I think uh, they're already booking flights when they'll have a flight to the moon. You want to buy part of the <laughs> real estate developers. So therefore the rocket, the rocket has become a rocket. Anyway, to, to, to go from, <clears throat> go back to the sublime from the comical. So he says here, the concept is, as you said correctly, it carries on, the deeper concept of 15 steps of the Beit HaMikdash is the name yud K. That's, that's the source of it. yud K. What does it represent, yud and the K? So the sages say, Ki yo Hashem Tso Olamim. Hashem formed the world with Yud and He. The formation of the world is, is hinted at in those two letters. Because with these two letters, Hashem created two worlds. The material world, He created with the He, and the spiritual world, He created with the Yud. Because it says, Bi Hashem Alamim. And since with these two names, Hashem created two worlds, therefore, we can understand that the steps in the Beit HaMikdash that bring us near to Hashem are 15. Because that brings to understanding the two worlds. Because the way a person can rise in this world, and the way that Hashem, the people of Israel, to rise in this world, is like the way in which the world was created. Because, he says, because, he uses the word here, that, Bachamisha also neged Hashem, who barait akol. To reach the highest level means to reach this level of connection with Hashem who creates this world and the coming world. And he can even reach the level of HaKadosh Baruch the 15th level. The 15th level is Malat Kedusha Nivdelet, is the level of transcendental holiness, which is the 15th step, which is represented by the Beit HaMikdash, because Mikdash means that which is holy and transcendental, and raised it to this level, Achikyu Yisrael, so the people of Israel could reach this high level. 
So I want to explain something to you from other writings of the Maral. The Maral says like this, if you want to understand it more deeply. The Yud represents really the sing called today today they call it the scientists the singularity. The singularity they recognize the whole world be begins from one one type of existence, or however you define it, which is very powerful and very small and does not even belong properly to the world of space. It's a power which is outside space. That's realized by the singularity. So the Maral explains this. The Yud in the Kabbalah represents the invisible dot, which has no area, no dimensions. It's a non-dimensional aspect beyond time and space from which all existence begins, which is non-material. And in the modern science, they say that the concrete world has slipped through the net of, <coughs> of modern science, scientific discovery. And they say, they know, they, the truth is in, in analysis of the physical world today, so the physical world is described in terms of its origin to be non-physical. That's the, it's even the, <coughs> Because, because basic energies, the root of energies, the root of the four forces is the singularity which has no dimensions. So we own time and space, that's the yud. And the he represents the three-dimensional world. That's why it's got three sides to it. The three sides of the he, that is the beginning of measurement. The, the, form, the smallest material existence it's got three dimensions. It's got a certain, that's, that's, that's the hay. Therefore, because Hashem, the Maral himself said, he says, and the Maral, by the way, he, the great astronomers who existed at that time in the area of Prague, they, they, they learned a lot from the Maral. That's why he's so much respected by the non-Jewish scientists and astronomers who lived in his time. And even the, even there was one of the great Jewish astronomers who had close connections with, with Tycho Brahe and with uh, Kepler, with the uh, with astronomers of that time. So the Maral develops this. The He is a reference to the three-dimensional world. That's why it's, this world was created with the He. The spiritual world, which has no dimensions, is represented by the Yud. So then he says, why do these steps go from the women's courtyard to the men's courtyard? Well, let's hear your explanation. What's it got to do with men and women? Um, the two halves of, uh, 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 there's a feminine half and a masculine half and they come together and that creates the whole soul. So it's, yes, correct. And, and there's a few capitalists. What's the difference between them? The number of limbs, the number of limbs is different. You What's the difference? You know what the difference? The, the number of the limbs. Who's got more limbs? The man. No, it's the woman. Women. How many limbs does a man have? It's connecting to the Shema. Uh, according to the Mishnah, according to the Mishnah, how it's brought in many, it's brought in many areas. It says, "I pin has also a kach romach biyado." Romach is how much? Ah, yeah, what's romach? To forty. Avraham Avinu, also. Abraham, with his full name, he gained control over his 248 limbs. And how many mitzvot are there? Yes, six How many? How how many positive mitzvot? 248. That's right. That's 248. That's a positive mitzvot. Bye bye. So 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 what? So what? The first answer me this question. Uh, I answer your question. Yeah, that's what. Uh, the only letters missing between Ish and Isha is Yud K. That's right. Yeah. So who's got what? Uh, Isha has Yud. No, uh, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Ish, Ish has the, the Yud and uh, Isha has the He. That's right. So the man, in other words, even Ish and Isha, the relation of men and women is fire. The fire of life is 
the relationship in man and woman, that creates fire, creates energy. It creates life, the connection with man and woman. So the man and woman are units together, as you said. But the two parts, there's the, in the man is the youth, where the man is being given the task to reach the highest spiritual perfection as much as possible. And the woman is there to support him, he's a connector. That's how it's, and the youth, so therefore, the youth is in the man, the he is in the woman. We see this even in the creation of life. The man just has to do one act, which produce, can produce new life. While the woman, the whole biology and the whole nature is made to go and provide proper material good development of rachame, of compassion, for the embryo and for the little baby, and then for the whole life, also for the life of the husband. And the husband's ultimate task is to reach a high level of spiritual affection, and the woman it becomes his partner. But the woman is more on the material side, while the man is more on the spiritual side. It does not mean that, it means, the truth is, every individual has within him, as we know, a man has got certain, even biological aspects, that have to do with the organs of women, and vice versa. What decides the gender is whichever one overwhelms the other. That creates the difference, the separation. So, but there's the elements of both in both, which means, let's say a woman, for one reason or another, she, 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 she can't have children, or even she's not married. It doesn't mean that she's got no, she's got a huge purpose. She can, she can still reach the highest level of perfection, but her greatest level of perfection comes through using the material world for a purpose which is spiritual. That means to develop chesed. She doesn't have the duty, although it can also happen. There are always, there are always exceptions to the rules that she can be a great scholar. But the, but the, but the essence of reaching the highest level, I mean, let's say serving the Beit HaMikdash and so on, that comes through the men, through the through masculine power, which has to be work hard to overcome and to use the whole materialistic life and use it to reach the heights of spiritual perfection. So that's what he says here, Yesh Ladar Ki Madrei is the lower, more material side, which is not El Achomriot. And to, to reach the Ezra of Yisrael, there are 15 steps between the more material ones to the ones that are higher on the level, if they, he called the Malan if Delet. They reach a level which is separated from the physical. And that's why it says in the mission. now this, this mission is important to understand the Shira Malot. I will bring it to you more in full. It says the Levian used to go up those steps from the women's gallery to the men's gallery, and there they said the Shira Malot. The men's was high in place the huh? men's gallery. Yeah. From the price the men's gallery was held, opposite then the particular place. Yes. Place yeah. of knowledge. Yeah. Why is it like opposite then? Uh, Rashi Shiva, why is it opposite then? I'll explain afterwards. Let's just finish this this part, which is in the middle of it. But he says, it says like this in the mission. How did they sing the different songs of the Shira Malot? That's one of them coming back to, which we hope to come back to Shul Vashem Metzion. Then we, everything that happened before we like a dream. We're dreaming when we thought of it's all suffering. It turns out afterwards to be all blessing. It says like this, that The Levites, they went up the steps, and it says that
They went with many, very many instruments, probably including cellos as well. They went, it says they went on these steps, Tibre Shiro Pratish Bachot, with their violins and with their harps and with their trumpets and with, with numeric, with musical instruments without number on the 15 steps that go down from the Ezra Israel to the Ezra Nashim that below, to follow the 15 Shiramalot of Tilim, on which the Vim stood and they said the Shiro. And two Kohanim stood on the upper gate, which went down from the Ezra of Israel to the Ezra of Nashim, and they had two trumpets in their hands, and then they blew the shofar, the trumpets. When they came to the, 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 the Azara, they went on blowing them until they came to the gate that went out on the east, then they turned their faces. And then it says these words. When they went down with these steps, they turned their face to the Mikdash and they said, Leko Eleno, our eyes are towards God using the name Yud K. Why did they mention the name Yud K? They said, Our forefathers, they went up to the lower things. They used to bow down to the sun, and therefore the sun and the material world. They worshipped the material world, Tvarim Kashmir. But we, our eyes are to Yud K, because we go after Kodesh Borofu, who is above the 15 steps and is above all of them. So he says here, these 15 steps are divided into three parts. The first, you, if, he says now goes, he goes back to the Gadar Pesach to understand it. The 15 steps, the first five, they speak about what happened to the people of Israel when we went out from Egypt. In Egypt, we were slaves to materialism. The, the Ramam says, Paro represents the Yitzhara. And there's no, there's, the, the, there's the only upwards growth that's mentioned. He took us out from Egypt. They're no longer slaves. That's the first five. Then the middle five are when we reached a higher level. There were so many miracles occurring to us in the desert. He describes all the miracles that took place there, the giving the Torah. And the last five represent Tachlid Achibo, when we were able to cling to Hashem, culminating in the building of the Beit HaMikdash. That's why the first five are the great miracles that occurred in Exodus from Egypt. That Hashem, Asabem Shvatim, He punished them and he killed their firstborn and he gave us their possessions, their wealth. All has to do with leaving and giving the, the material suffering and being really, reaching the level of physical freedom in every way, physical fortune. The middle ones, they speak what came to us when we came out. The splitting of the sea, such great miracles, and that our enemies, they drowned in the sea. Then he gave us all our physical needs in the desert and gave us the monte eat, and all the miracles took place in the desert, which have to do with a high level of being protected by Hashem, in such a high level that we, we, we were close to him with all the open miracles. But the last five, they deal with the mitzvot, the divine mitzvot, which proves that we are clinging to him. And after that, there's no, there's, there's the, the, this brings the highest level. Then it mentions the Shabbat, which is such a great gift to us, and also coming near to the Mount of Sinai, and giving us the Torah, and bringing us into Eretz Israel, which is the highest spiritual level, and ultimately building for us the Beit HaMikdash. So these five last ones, they speak about the closest level to Hashem. As a result of this, we are the Vekim Mulagamri. So therefore, the Shir Amalo, the, 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 which is said on these 15 steps, correspond to these three levels. Because if, <coughs> when the people had not yet left Egypt, we didn't really exist as a nation. It often been explained. As it says in the Chumash as well, we're just like an embryo 
that is in the womb of its mother, and in a similar manner, the people of Israel, they were the lowest uh, group of slaves in the hierarchy of Egypt, and had no independent existence. And only when they got out from Egypt, they gained real existence. That's why it's called me Afeil al Ora. So then he goes on, and let that, the further explanation will have to lead to the next year. We continue.